Hello and welcome to Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. In this program, we take the questions that you send us and Father Gruner answers them. And continue, please, to send us these questions at questions at thefatimacenter.com. We have a question here that says, and again, this one is from Italy. So uh, the, the final question, those of you in, in North America are, are going to realize that it's the same problem all over, but I'll, I'll, I'll let the question speak for itself. Our Lady, on July 13, 1917, said to the children, you have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. And in August, Aunt Lucy said many souls go to hell because there's no one to pray and make sacrifices for them. So the question is, why do more of our parish priests um, speak, why don't they speak to us about hell? So why do they not speak about why hell? Did, they not, did, I, did I say it wrong? Anyway, why do they not speak to us about hell? Yes. So, it, obviously it's a common problem, as you were mentioning, it's also in North America, but this is coming from Italy, coming from Rome, from what I can, I, actually it's coming from Salerno, of all places. Um, but uh, they're watching it either on our, because we're on the internet, uh, you know, the, we broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week on, on, in Rome itself, but it's also carried on the internet in, Latin, in Italian all over the world, so including, of course, Salerno. In any case, the answer is a very simple question. Or I might, you might think this, this really concerns you, which is because you're not praying for your priest enough. You might say, well, listen, this woman, don't turn it around. Don't blame me for what the priests are not doing. Well, you're right and you're wrong. As, um, as again, St. John Eudes, first chapter of his book on the dignity of the priesthood, uh, citing chapter, uh, I think it's chapter 3, do I have that correct, of, of Jeremiah, verse, one, verse 15, in which God says to the people at that time, uh, uh, through Jeremiah, if you, my people, will turn back to me, that is to God, and pray and do penance, I, God, in return, will send you good priests, priests after my own heart. That's, uh, that's, that's it's a famous quotation from Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. But... St. John Eudes then elaborates on this point and says, but, he says, if the people of God do not turn back to God, then God will send them the worst chastisement he can send them, which is bad priests, that they'll be wolves in sheep's clothing and that they will drag people to hell with them. Now, some people, it's, it's quite shocking, but it's quite true. So that you know, the quality of our priests are to some extent dependent on how close or how much we are trying to please God. Mm -hmm. So if they're not talking about hell, when you don't have to be, you don't have to be a, a prophet or a saint to walk down the street, whether in, in this city or in your city or any place in North America or in Europe or in Italy or Rome to know that there's lots of mortal sin going on. I mean, people are dressing in such a way as to invite other people to sin. That's, I mean, it's just... <laughs> That's the nature of it. They, they're not trying to, you know, uh, be modest. I, I remember old Father Marion. Um, I, I was he was a chaplain for ten years, and he used to he said we used to tell people in the confessional avoid the occasion of sin. We can't yeah. say that anymore. I mean, he still says it, of course, yeah. but his point was is it's so, it's it's difficult to avoid because the the immodesty uh, the. Um, it's, it's, it's as if uh, men and women are to be kept in a state of constant stimulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it is, it's, it's difficult to avoid the occasion of sin, that's all I'm well, saying. Well, I, I guess the, the, the actual teaching, when I've, I've had this question with my uh, professor of morals to me, and he said the more exact precision of that is that you have to avoid the voluntary occasions of right. sin. Yeah, so in this case, these, when you're walking down the street, it's not entirely voluntarily what you see. But you can do your best you can to, to avoid seeing these things. But, I mean, as some, uh, some spiritual director told me one years ago, he said, well, you know, you can't turn your eyes away when you're driving a car. You, you could cause an accident. Mm -hmm. So you, in any case, you have to see what, in order to, to, to not kill somebody. But, but in turn, to the extent you can, you avoid... Uh, but then that's all it is, avoiding the voluntary occasion of sins. But anyway, obviously, many people are living in a state of sin today, and many people are not being reminded that by doing this, they continue their life that way, there's only one place they're going to end up, and that's going to be hell. And so it would be certainly a, a it, it's, it's, it may be an unpleasant subject, 
but it's really a service to people to say, listen, if you don't change your way, you're going to go to hell. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, not to say I'm better. I mean, I have to watch it for myself too. But it is part of the preaching of the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Well, know? Father, no. He, I mean, I remember the uh, the talk he gave, and it was very had a very basic title. It said, "Hell exists, and we might go there." Yeah. And that's the reality. Our Lord talked more about hell in the gospel than he did about heaven. Yeah. And uh, because we need that stimulation, um, not stimulation isn't the right word, but the we reminder. need that reminder uh, that, um, that this life is only a temporary and it's a test. Yes. And the way we live our eternity forever is based on how we spend that short amount of time here and how we conduct ourselves. And there's no third alternative. Yes. It's either heaven or hell in the yes. end. Right, exactly. Well, as, as I think you were mentioning before this program, that uh, John Paul II lamented that priests were not mentioning the four last things. That's in case people don't know what the four last things are, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Everyone's going to die. Everyone's going to be judged. They're either going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. And yes, there's purgatory on the way to heaven, but ultimately they're going to get to heaven they get to purgatory. But death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Yeah, I uh, think part of it too might... might uh, the reason that there's been um, not enough talk about uh, the last things and about how because this superstition that has taken place even amongst Catholic leaders that everybody is saved, a kind of a universal salvation and that heaven is kind of, you know, the way that, you know, I'm born and then I'm just, I'm going to grow up. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to go through childhood. I'm going to go through adolescence. I'm going to go through adulthood. I'm going to, if I live, I'm going to go through old age and I'm going to die and then the next stage of that is just heaven for everybody. And it's kind of the old dogs go to heaven um, uh, well, theology. But there's a lot of that idea that, um, you know, the only people who are in, heaven, in, in hell are, you know, Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. And, but uh, kind of a universal salvation well, of course, that I mean, has taken over. Well, the whole thing is, of course, we can, you know, um, the whole idea is that we, we believe the gospel. The gospel tells us you know, that, uh, that if people live according to God's law, they go to heaven if they do what God asks for, certainly receive the sacraments and, uh, and stay, live in the state of grace and persevere in that to the end of their lives. But on the other hand, if people either don't accept the gospel, if they're not baptized, he who believes in the baptized will be saved. And if he truly believes, he's going to live the, the gospel. And if he's going to live the gospel, he will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Condemned means one thing, he's going to go to hell. So the first rule is that they have to believe and be baptized. And then, of course, live that baptism for the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. Mm -hmm. So the idea that people, everyone's going to go to heaven is obviously contradicted by the teaching of Christ. He came on, and died on the cross. And what did he die on the cross for? Because he came to witness to the truth. As when Pilate said, you know, I came, to, I came to witness to the truth. So the truth is people go to hell if they don't live according to God's law. <laughs> so... so is everyone living according to God's law? Well, it's obvious that the law says one thing and people are doing another thing. Now, not to say everybody, mm -hmm. but certainly large portions of the population today. And yes, they're, they're deceived and their priests are helping deceive them because they don't talk about, uh, about hell. They don't talk about what it is to do to get to heaven. You know, and a Catholic may politely uh, ask the priest, uh, why don't you give us sermons about this? Uh, I was actually, a, it was a friend of ours, I'll tell you who it is uh, after the program, but uh, I just happened to be at one of his masses. And he says, I can always, I'm always guaranteed to talk on a subject when I hear someone say, you know, I don't hear priests talk about this anymore. Huh. And he says, I, he says, I feel that I have to uphold the, the dignity of the priesthood and give a sermon on the topic that he says huh. we don't hear about anymore. You know, you, Catholics, you can go to the priest and say, you know, even John Paul II said, we don't hear about the four last things. Why don't, you know, would you consider, why don't you give a talk about hell? St. John Vianney always spoke on hell. Yes. Always. And uh, Catholics can do that. You could ask for, for uh, if something's lacking in the regular sermons, you can ask that it be supplied. And the second thing is that you need to pray for the priests. I mean, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, not to say, that, and the priests pay for, should pray for the people. They, they say the Mass every day, they're praying for the people. But the priests obviously need prayers as well. So anyway, uh, we're out of time on this one. And um, we will see you on the next broadcast. Thank you for being with us. And... We will see you next time. Thank you.